You're listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Visit our website at www.oneblueraven.weebly.com. Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to the all-new Never replicated. You're listening to the all new KBLU Radio Network, Blue Raven Network. one of those nights where we're just going to see what comes up. I um I I'm I I really want to bring up the subject of compromise. We're we're where we are because we compromised. The so-called Christian church compromised. They didn't want to offend anyone. They didn't want to judge anyone. They didn't want to take a, a strong moral stance against those things that are evil. If we're truly men and women of God, then we do not even give the appearance of you know being associated or, or doing such things or, or even you know in the presence of evil, in the presence of sin, in the presence of those things that are not edifying to God. Now, we're a fallen man, we live in a fallen world, but we are not of the world. Those who love the world will lose their life, and meaning that you'll be thrown in the lake of fire. Now, I don't always have a great, you know, (laughs) I say that I don't always have a great cheery uh, message, I get that. You know, I've done this for long enough now. And watching the evolution of destruction upon this country, um, and the time that's short, I'm trying to to um, kind of throw cold water on you to get you to wake up. You know, the house is on fire. It's time to go out the window. One of those things. And and so as I as I look past over the years, I've done this for a while now. When, when I did the Second Heaven Invasion and I did all the 30 chapters, which you'll find that I, that I have a channel here on, on Blog Talk just for Second Heaven Invasion, uh, but I also made the YouTube videos, so you can go to YouTube and you can go to that playlist, Second Heaven Invasion. And it was more of an instruction and giving the support that while dealing with these things, that there's light at the end of the tunnel. But again, what I've what I've found even since I've done those shows, those teachings, that the compromise continues. Now, I, I would like to think that many, you know, the people who've been listening over the time and have listened to those and read my book, Second Heaven Invasion and Hoodoo Voodoo, which are still available on the website, that I put a dent in, in all this. Now there are p- people who write and call and and thank me that you know they 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 get it now, they've come out of this issue of depression. Uh, now they're now they're um, now they have a righteous anger, and, and they're clenching their fist at the devil instead of at God. They're they're mad at the demons instead of mad at their spouse. That's very important. 
Now, when we compromise, though the church tries... Now, when I say the church, I'm not talking about the church of God. I'm not talking about the church of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about this four walls lie that was put in place intentionally to keep you in bondage. Now, that may offend some people. And and if it does, oh well. Because I would rather be offended and and then come to the understanding of the truth than to be comp- to be continually told a lie. Because that lie keeps you in bondage. And that lie eventually leads you to death. Same thing with sin. Though not all sin leads to death, there are certainly those that put us in a bondage, put us in out of favor of God, okay, uh, grieving the Holy Spirit, those things that keep us from receiving blessings. And then there's flat-out sin that just literally puts us into the fiery pits of hell. Now, I, I, I... kind of ran out of time of getting some notes together, but I did the best I could, and I'm going to expound on the things that I have here. And I, I just want you to understand, your, it, it is no mistake that your spirit is in the, the vessel, the body that it is in, in, the, in, this, in these days. Okay, now for those who believe in reincarnation and all this other stuff, that's part of the lie of of Satan to keep you thinking that there's truth and hope and, and, uh, and a better way through some other means. Okay, and there isn't. It's, it's Christ or nothing. Because you see, we have an adversary. We, we, have, um, we have an enemy who hates you. And so there cannot be compromise. You cannot compromise. If you're in a war, a war situation, if you're in a battle, and let's say you're hiding behind a wall and the enemy's over there with an AK-47 and, and you know, hopefully they don't have a grenade launcher or anything like that. But if you literally say to yourself, <clears throat> what I can do, is I'm going to uh, say, hold on, and I'm going to run over to the to the car that's all blown apart, and get behind the, you know the bumper here, and so I can get a better angle at, at the demon at the at the at the the, the guy shooting at me. So I'm going to yell out, hang on, and and so you you run out, and the guy probably doesn't speak English anyways. And he's going to nail you. And he's going to say in his, his mind, in his language, stupid American, stupid Christian, what would you do that for? What are you, stupid? Because in, in reality, it's insanity. The, the compromise that we have done is to believe that, that men can change into women and women can change into men and that it's okay for the same sex. It's okay for killing of babies see this is all compromise and this compromise is a is a coward's way out of dealing with the truth of dealing with those things that god sees as an abomination so therefore you don't fear god you fear man do you understand now many of you that listen to my show and listen to when julie and i are on tinfoil hat club um, don't you get it? You know you're you know you're 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 wanting more conviction. You're wanting more to be fed, and more more moral support. You're not alone, but but see the very fact that since God is the Father of spirits, and we're here today, it is no accident that your spirit in your body, your consciousness, your soul the very being of who you are, you've been called. You've been called. And this is, this is it. Okay? Um, You know, I always hated running the mile in high school. I hated it. 
And there was nothing better than seeing the finish line in that last quarter. You know, I always did okay, uh, and I was, a, I was a good athlete, but I hated it. And, you know, because jogging is one thing and running a couple miles is another, but when you got to go full out for a mile, that, that's, that's, a, that's a pain, right? Okay, so here we are, and, and that finish line has been taken from us. Now, in, in reality, if we obey God, if we do the, the commandments of Jesus Christ, if we run the good race, if we show ourselves approved, if we don't lose faith if, in, in those things that I want to cover with some scripture here, um, then, then the crown of glory, the salvation, awaits us. The relationship to be with our Most High God with, you know, in eternity awaits us. And, and so the deception is that in our compromise that we're still going to get those things. Okay? Um, I'm going to do what my brother does. When he reads a magazine, he reads it backwards. Now, don't ask me why. He just does. So I'm, I'm going to read this backwards. In, in Revelation 3.11, hold fast what you have so no one can take your crown. Okay, let me let me move over here to to um, James uh, James one twelve. Blessed is a man who preserves under trial, for he will receive a crown of life. And then we see in Revelation, careful that no man takes your crown. Now the the worthless church will tell you that you cannot lose your salvation. Well, no because I don't like the word lose, you forfeit. You can have your name written out in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay? And Satan knows this. And so all of this religious bunk, all of these false doctrines, all of the stuff that has been taught in the churches is to get you to compromise, and you're compromising because you don't fear God. You're not fearing losing your crown. You're not fearing... Uh, of having your name removed from the Lamb's Book of Life. Because the devil has lied to you. So in reality, we've taken the coward's way out. But the coward's way out is death. Is death. Okay? So all around us in every city, you need to understand that an abortion clinic and and even even an embalming, for that matter, that the wastewater treatments or the wastewater system within a city, and I'm very familiar with it. I used to work on the controls. I used to work on the monitors and the, the pumps and, and the, the motor controls and all that stuff. Uh, it wasn't my best job, but it sure, certainly paid the bills. Uh, the, the point of it is, is underneath us, the world we don't think about, the underworld, is wastewater. And it's channeled, gravity feed, force pumped, you know, force mains they call it, to to a facility that treats it before it releases it out, you know, whether it's into a river or whether it's into, you know, more groundwater or whatever they do. But the point of it is, is that like in abortion clinics and, and some of these other places, this stuff goes down the drain. So what we have is blood and guts going down the drain. We have baby parts. We, we have those things that come out of our loved ones that go, go down in the drain and, and go underneath us, go underneath our feet, okay? Right down the street, the very street you drive. And eventually goes to a wastewater facility. And, and by the way, <clears throat> the removal of solids is is primarily what they do there is some some to take out toxins and some of the, depending on the facility and the environment that they're dealing with but you need to understand listen to me 
that when it comes to blood, when it comes to tissue, when it comes to these things, many of these things make it through and go back in to the, to the environment. Medications go back into the environment. We see in California, the Berkeley area, Silicon Valley, those, those Silicon Valley, those areas, are, they're, they're working to make laws that um, the nanotechnology being so, so small, nanotechnology, that they can pass through those filters. They can make it through the wastewater treatment facilities and into the environment. Now you've got these little critters, you've got these little monsters that they're creating that are being released in the environment. So in reality, we're tainting. We're, we're making an abomination for the very country that we live in. And how did that happen? Because we compromised. Because we're a bunch of cowards. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be uh, able to stand in righteousness before the Most High God, showing ourselves approved, keeping the, the commandments, doing those things to expose evil, charging forth in doing those things that bring salvation, that bring healing, that bring restoration, that bring the power of the Holy Spirit, but instead we grieve the Holy Spirit. Instead we even do those things which are an abomination. And then we see that when, when the, the Holy Spirit is blasphemed, that in which there is no salvation. Pretty, pretty big stuff. Now, I get hammered a lot uh, by Christians. I don't think I ever had a Satanist give me a hard time about deliverance. Um, but, but the Christians love, love to set me on fire and, and throw me out the door. Now, we need to understand that in the Great Commission of Jesus Christ, and, and 25 verses literally tell me, command me, to do what I do. And when the Pharisees accused Jesus of using Beelzebub to cast out demons, that in what they were doing is that Jesus himself filled with the Holy Spirit, using the Holy Spirit, that what they were, what they were saying is that, he would, that, that God was using evil to cast out evil. And in this is seen as blaspheming the Holy Spirit in which there is no redemption. So I, I want to caution everyone that when you have somebody who has fruit, when you have somebody who has been working and doing those things as we've been called, that have testimonies, that are doing the works through the Word, the Word says, we, we as Bereans align, we test the Spirit, there are those things that um, come to pass that show that there is uh, those fruits, but yet you have those because they have compromised the Word of God, because they're cowards, have cowered behind the demons, to, to throw witchcraft prayers, charismatic witchcraft. Uh, the tongue is a two-edged sword, so you can bless and you curse. And when we curse our fellow Christian, when we do charismatic witchcraft, when we do those things that oppress and keep a man or woman of God from doing those things, then we have blasphemed, we have grieved, we have been disobedient. We have been rebellious. We are lawless. Can you tell me that these people belong to Jesus? I want you to think really long and hard about this. That those who are willing to go against God's word, because that's what they're doing, to take a stance and make accusations. Okay, you, you talk about Christians, you're saying that you're not supposed to judge. Okay, and that whole thing's blown out of proportion. Okay, we're actually called to judge because we who stand in righteousness and in the authority are to recognize and to, to, to bring forth, uh, to bring out of the occult, those things that are hidden, to make known evil and the sins and in that, then there can be a rectification, there can be understanding, 
there can be made right those things that are wrong that Satan does. Okay, when I pray for people, I pray for a man and woman of God to be what God intended them to be and not what Satan tried to turn them into or did turn them into. Okay, the opposition. So when we compromise, if I get someone in here and they tell me, well, you know, I got a, I got a drug problem or I got a, a pornography problem, and I'm looking at my little, you know, cheat sheet that I take notes on and I, you know, keep me on track because a lot of people want to tell me their life story and certainly I, I, I want to hear that. <clears throat> but there are things that demons will run me down a rabbit hole for an hour if I let them do it. So I have a little sheet that I keeps me on track, okay? Pulls me back into reality. And that reality is that I have to to address the sins of the individual in front of me because if I do not, then the legal right of the demons will remain and they go home with their demons. I don't want you to go home with your demons. I want you to go home with yourself cleansed with full of the Holy Spirit, and able to then go on to do the deliverance and the healing of other people. The Holy Spirit should be contagious. Okay? Now, if, if I see someone, let's say they have a pornography problem, and I've had this before, and I have the Holy Spirit say, um, though they're renouncing it, they still have things on their hard drive on their computer at home. And I'll say to them, so, on your partition drive, you have a hidden file of your favorite pictures. And, and then they all, they'll look at me. Oh, my gosh, how did he know that? I said, what I, what I want you to do, I want you to go home, okay, promise me now, Say before the Lord that you're going to go remove those things. You're going to delete them. And you need, need to remember, too, when you delete, you don't really delete and, until it's been rewritten over it. Okay, and that's why some of these people get caught by the police agencies on child pornography. They'll go in and they'll delete their, those, these pictures thinking, oh, I got rid of it. But no, you just need a little hacker to get in there and, and reactivate that address back to that file. See, that's all you've done is you've taken the flag out so your hard drive doesn't address it. That's all, until it's rewritten over it. Now, that can happen. So I want you to do that, and in that, in that promise that you're going to do it, then the legal right of the demons to have you through that sin that you're committing, then I can cast these demons out and not worry that when you get home and you don't do it, that they're going to come back with vengeance. They're going to come back with a bunch more that are even worse. Now, I'm not talking about the seven times thing. It's another thing. I'll, I'll address that later. But I want, you, I want you to understand that the reason that the United States and, the, and, and where we're at is in the shape that it's in is because the Christians, so-called Christians, compromised. Okay? Now, let's, let's go right back. I haven't even got to my notes yet. Let's go right to the garden. Okay? <clears throat> now, I don't care what your doctrine is when it comes to the sins of the garden, because there's, there's things out there. Uh, I have my beliefs. Um, but, but the word says that when the serpent, being Satan, when he came in, in whatever form he was in, when he came to Adam and Eve... Adam was put in charge of the garden. He's, he was the man, okay? Now, Eve is the one who partook, and then eventually Adam did too. But you see, Adam should have kicked his rear end out of there. But he didn't. And so even though Eve is the one who was primary on, the, on that, Adam was the one held responsible, because he was put in charge. Now, why don't you listen to me? If you don't think that we weren't put in charge of this world, 
to get it back in check, to do things right, because greater is he that lives in us. If, he's, if Jesus Christ is in us and he's taking care of everything, to give us all power and authority to trample on scorpions and serpents, and we didn't do it, who do you think is going to be held accountable? Do you know the curse of the garden falls on the male? Did you know that? That's right. Even though Eve was the one, Adam was in charge, and so it was his responsibility. Because you see, if the curse of the garden was actually on the female side, then Mary, the, the, the physical mother of Jesus, would have been disqualified. Okay? And note that it had to be the Holy Spirit who came into Mary and not a physical man. Okay? Because he carried the curse. So I'm I'm telling you that as both men and women, okay, because we're brothers and sisters in Christ and we're we're now in as Abraham, the seed of Abraham, where we've come into a new covenant with Jesus Christ because of what he did on the cross, then we both have a responsibility. Now there's still an order of things, okay? Whenever I pray for a family and Unfortunately, any time anyone comes in here, uh, it, if, if they're a married couple, it's going to be one or the other. It's very seldom do I ever get a husband and wife in here. And, and one or the other is not in Christ or is, is lukewarm or whatever the situation is. Okay? But when I pray for someone and I speak in the spirit realm, because I'm, when I'm praying, I'm... I'm I'm speaking just like Jesus. Jesus spoke to the weather. Okay, the seas. He he told them to calm down. He spoke the word. Okay, when I speak, it's God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the man of the house, the wife, and then the children. In that order. Now, unfortunately, that since we compromised, then... It's all in disarray, the, the family. So I, I, I try and put the pieces back together. You ever, you ever play uh, some of these games where you, know, there's a, you, know, you put a stack together and they fall apart and you know, so forth, or you try and remove some things before they, so they don't all fall down and whoever it falls down on? Well, that's our lives. But unfortunately, that's also our walk with, with God. We have, we, doesn't matter who you are, we've all compromised in some way or another. I did. And, and, and here's what's interesting. <clears throat> I'll get emails, I'll get phone calls sometimes, and, and Julie's passionate, right? Okay. And sometimes people will be a little upset and complain. And, and, and I just have to say that without that passion, without hating the devil, without hating evil, then she would be compromising. But because she's not compromising, then she has to take a stand. And in that stand is where we show ourselves approved because we will not, uh, we will not negotiate with evil. I've, I've had, I don't know how many times... People tell me that they've actually negotiated with de demons, so so they'll let up for a while. Okay, so what it means is you came into agreement with evil. Very bad idea. That compromise. Now I won't call you a coward because if you if you're tormented long enough, you're wore out. You're tired. You're sick, and you're sick of being sick. I get it. But because this church, who is a coward, they've put you in that situation. See, those that when we come together, we come together as the body of Christ. We come together with the gifts. We come together with the commandments. We come together with the power, the dunamis, those things. That when we stand, just like in Ephesians 6, we stand against the wiles of the enemy. We take back what the enemy has stolen. We expose evil. 
We cast out demons. We heal those who are sick. We bind up the broken heart. We, we make disciples of all men. Well, well, but we're not doing that. We're compromising because, because the church is a coward. And I'm not talking about the church of Jesus Christ because God says, or Jesus, that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. So who is the church? The remnant of the last days. Because we will have trials. We will have tribulation. And we're told again to let no man take your crown. Okay, so if we're compromising, if we're allowing those things to come into our lives that bring us into a frame of mind that it's okay, like that, like I was mentioning earlier, that you're behind the wall and there's a sniper up there or, or gumming out of a window, and, and you think you can run over to that car because you negotiated, you think you negotiate with this gunman, hang on. You know, time out. It doesn't work that way. Look, it's all or nothing. And and because you haven't learned that, or you don't want to do that, or whatever the situation is, just as we read in Corinthians that those who have taken communion improperly, many are sick and asleep among you, meaning you've already died. Now, that's a curse from God, by the way, when you take communion improperly. And you'll find the Freemasons do that. And that's one of the reasons the curse is so strong in in many families, why there's premature death, early early death, suicide, respiratory problems, fears. You ever seen anyone fear sound? You ever seen anyone fear the darkness? You ever seen anyone fear closed areas? I mean, I don't like closed areas either, but but some people go insane. The fear grips them so bad that they go crazy. They actually, you know, lose it. And and we're told that we have not been given a spirit of fear. Now, <clears throat> let me let me go through some things here. Uh, on on Tinfoil Hat Club, I have, and I've told it before, that I put a page up that's specific, and it's called Goathead Wall of Shame. All right? Now, we have those who are liars and deceivers and are false prophets and false teachers and those who are wolves that are among us. And we shall know them by their fruit. We shall know them by their behaviors. We shall know them by their doctrines. So in this Goathead Wall of Shame... Let me just point out Joel Olstein. If if anyone's listening to me and you listen to Joel Olstein, you got a really mean, nasty demon in your noggin. Now, oof, boy, that the spirit did not like me saying that. Because you need to understand that Joel Olstein is not a man of God. He is a compromise, and he is a coward. And he has sold you out. He is lying to you. He's giving you that feel good. He's part of the last days of the great deception. He will be instrumental in the great falling away. Because in your thinking that, you know, uh, if all you're if all you're doing is preaching love, and believe me, God is love. But and and he doesn't want us to perish. He knows there's a there's a, a wolf out there. He knows there's a serpent. He knows there are those things that want to kill you, and he needs to wake. He, he wants to wake you up. He wants you to understand that through through what Jesus did, he gave you the tools. He gave you those things necessary to fight back. But because of compromise, and the church being cowards, your ability to war and to pray and and to to do those things to stand against the wiles of the enemy don't even exist. I've got a handful of people right now who won't fight. And the devil is kicking their rear ends badly. And it's absurd. And the demons are laughing all the way to the bank, or whatever you want to call that. I've had demons manifest and go, Pfft, Christians, they don't know who they are. We can do what we want. Well, you know what? They're right. You know why? 
because you don't know who you are. You don't know that you are a child of the Most High God. You don't, you, don't, you don't have it in your spirit yet that you've been bought with the price of the blood of Jesus. And many of you don't recognize that you haven't been given a spirit of fear. You have not been given that. What you've been given is power and love and a sound mind. Power, dunamis, those things of Christ. Look, when I pray, demons are set on fire and they run like their rear ends are on fire. And there's a couple of boys that are hardened or seasoned uh, uh, warriors, and they'll put up a fight. You know, you ever? Could you imagine trying to take a a, a bobcat and and trying to catch it and, and put it in a gunny sack? Good luck with that. Okay, if you're operating outside of Christ. If, if if you don't know who you are, that's what you're doing. You're trying to take grab a, a bobcat, and believe me, they're they're nothing you mess with. They may not be as big as a mountain lion, but they'll rip you up. And if you try if you try and grab it, you're not going to catch it anyways. But if you did and you tried to put it in a gunny sack, <laughs> oh. well, you know, when when you don't know who you are. And, and and you don't stand in the righteousness and and operate in the blood of Jesus Christ, you're doing the same thing. And the demons are ripping you up. They're going up one side of you and down the other, and they're laughing the whole time. And you know what? That's insane. That is absolutely insanity. Because... And it also, again, is an insult to Jesus. Okay? Have you ever worked really hard and did something loving for someone you cared about? And, and they, you know, you gave them, you worked on this thing and you gave it to them. You know, how about when you were a child? You made something for your mom and you were so proud of it and she was busy or whatever the deal was. And she said, oh, yeah, okay, thanks. And it crushed you. What do you think that does to Jesus? What do you think grieving the Holy Spirit is? What do you think? He did all this work, all this preparation. He gave himself. He, he had the, the, the hide take a rain off of his, him. He was down to the bone. He was bleeding all over the place. And he was nailed to a... Could you imagine having those spikes driven through you? For every time that hammer went up and and you heard the chink when it went down, could you imagine the pain that went through Jesus? But every time he did that, every time he he tolerated that pain, he did it for you and me. He did it for every past, present, and future sin. And the church right now is a bunch of cowards. And they're really pissing me off because you guys are dying. You guys are getting hit by cars. You guys are getting shot. You guys are getting stabbed in the alleys by the demons, the very ones that Jesus paid the price to get rid out of your life. I can't. I, every time someone comes in this office and I hear their story, you know, you think after 16 years I heard, oh, well, no, man, I, I, there's always something. And it didn't have to happen. And it's not your fault. You were children when this was being done to you. But after 2,000 years, you think we'd have it right by now. And another 2,000 years, there won't be any flesh left. That's why Christ has to return. Because somewhere along the line, we dropped the ball. We bought the lie. We compromised. And because of that, many are sick and asleep among you. And I'll tell you what, there will be accountability for every one of us. We will all go before the beam of seat if we're in Christ, and the world will go before the judgment seat of God. And I'll tell you what, to fall into the hands of a living God is no place to be. We will show ourselves approved. We will have our works displayed, whether it's going to be burned up or not. And I'll tell you what, those that have been brought to this time 
have been given the gifts, have been shown the way, have been given the opportunity to do the Great Commission, to do the commandments, and we didn't do it, you've got some explaining to do. Now, I want to... I've got so much here. <clears throat> um, Julie brought it to my attention. I had sent her a link, and, and then she went through it. I, it was a busy day for me. Um, I need to address this. Now, I, I, I saw one of the conferences uh, that's um, streamed on the Internet from Chris Putman and Tom Horn and a bunch of others. And there, there was a, one book that Chris writ, uh, had written about uh, spirits and, and, and those things, and he absolutely horrified me. Because obviously he got his information from witches, he got his information from the occult, and he, and I, and I don't care. I don't care what he thinks. I don't care what anyone thinks. I know what I know, because I can tell you the information they gave would put people in a position that you would think you, you know what you're doing, but you don't, and you're going to get your rear ends kicked. Now, I'm going to take it one step further, all right? Now, in Matthew 23, 8, we're to call no man rabbi, okay? And in Romans 1, 16, it, we're, we're to profess that we are not ashamed of the gospel. And it was first addressed to the Jews and then the Gentiles. Now, Tom Horn and Chris Putman, they've got something on that Skynet or whatever they call that show, that, that they're going to have uh, this rabbi, I don't even, can't even pronounce his name, uh, rabbi? We're not to call you man rabbi. Well, why do you have a man that most likely could be the seed of Satan anyways, that is supposedly this man of God who knows the prophecies, who is going to be using the Torah, which has nothing to do with the New Testament or even the Old Testament for that matter? Why are you having someone on who's going to be telling us the future of things? Supposedly, God informing us, giving the word. Look, ladies and gentlemen, there's something wrong here. And and their association with Gary Sturman, okay, go go to the Goathead Wall of Shame. All right, there's a problem here. Now, when I... When I first wrote Second Heaven Invasion, Tom Horn was one of the first ones I went to. Now, he has a publishing company, and he talks about, you know, the books and, and that if you had a hard time finding a publisher and everything else, you know, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even get an email. I didn't get a call back. I didn't get squat. Now, that's his, that's his priority. But why do you want to promote this garbage, Tom Horn and Chris Putman? When, when it's quite clear in Matthew 23, 8, and in Romans 1, 16, you're obviously in error here. You're, you're, you're promoting what we shouldn't be even addressing. So, and, 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 and the book that I wrote, writ, is for setting the captives free using the power of the dunamis of the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? There's a problem here. I, I want you people to do your own homework on this. And and then throw in the goat head and the pyramid and all the other signs. We've caught you. There's people who painstakingly have looked at the videos and taken the pictures, the, the captured frames, and posted them. And I grabbed them and threw them on that wall, the goat head wall of shame. Okay, so there's a problem here. Now, <clears throat> in Romans 2.7, we're to continue in our well-doing, in our seeking for the glory and honor. The mortality and the eternal life is what, what is our reward for this. Again, the crowns. 
in Philippians 2.12, we're told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Okay? Now, if you've compromised, then you're not doing what this has told us to do. Because it's our God that we fear, not fear of the world, fear of demons, fear of Satan, because it's him who can cast us into the, sec- the, the, the lake of fire, the second death. Jesus, or, or Satan can kill us, but he can't kill our spirit. Now, there's this once saved, always saved. That's, that's a lie, because, because the scripture is quite clear that we can have our name, name removed from the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay? And I've talked about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, okay? And which which there is no salvation from, there is no redemption. And and I've warned about grieving the Holy Spirit. And we're also reminded in James one twelve, blessed is a man who preserves under trial, again, to receive the crown of life. Now I'm tying this all together to make you understand that there are, there are people out there that are compromising because I believe they're cowards they're, they're either already in bed with Satan and their plants or they've, they've compromised and they've sold out for what money? the love of money is the root of all evil now by not standing against evil by not doing anything as we've called to do then in re- reality, by not standing in opposition to it, then we're in agreement with it. There's no other way to look at that. And again, I'm reminded that in that, we must do that. Then in Revelation 3.11, hold fast what you have so no man can take your crown. Because if you're not going to stand against evil, then the demons that are released into the world, the demons that are already here, there's going to be a whole bunch more Okay. Those are going to be lying, deceiving demons. Those are going to be witchcraft. Those are going to be those things of perversion. Those are going to be those things of murder. There's going to be those things of lust. They're going to be those things that literally will infest your mind that eventually you'll be turned over. And phew, that's a scary place to be. Now, if you have fear, and we've talked about that, then you need deliverance. Okay. If you have unforgiveness, you need to remember that God will not forgive those who do not forgive because Jesus paid the ultimate forgiveness. And we we got to remember not to be retaliatory towards people because we're not to pay evil for evil. It's very important. It's very important. Because if you do those things, then what you're doing is you're giving demons a legal right to continue their behavior, and their behavior is destructive. So, you know, what do we do here? Well, you need to make a choice. Look, it's on your plate now. You know, the the tennis match or the the badminton, you know, the bird or the ball is over on your side, and you got to do something with it. Any time that you compromise, you take a step back. Let me, let me, um, this happened to me when I was 14. I entered into a um, kumite, which is the, the competition of martial arts, down in Tucson, Arizona. I was 14 years old. And I was already in my color belts, and I was already being raised up to be an instructor. And so, when I when I went into to, to the to the match to the fight, I was so young and so small. There wasn't any in, in my color belt division. There wasn't anybody to match me up against. So they threw me in with 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 the men. And there was this. I don't know. He may not have been that big, but at 14 years old, as far as I'm concerned, he was a beast. <clears throat> and when I, every time that I came in at him, 
his arms and his legs were so big I couldn't hit anything. And all he had to do was push me. And he pushed me out of the ring twice, the circle. Now, if you're out, if you if you get pushed out of the ring three times, you're disqualified. Okay, I want you to listen to this. So he knew all he had to do was push me out. I, I mean, uh, you know, my my reach and my kick, I tried to do the best I can, but, you know, we're talking, you know, there's quite a difference here. So at the last moment, and I don't know what came over me, as my foot stepped on that round circle, I spun around with what we called a back knuckle, and I caught him in the head. Now, we weren't supposed to do full contact, but I thought, what the heck? Now, I got disqualified because I got pushed out, and I got disqualified because I made head contact. Now, the man that was in charge of of the uh, match of Tucson and Phoenix, and, and I won't say his name, he was very well known, he came over to me, and he put his arm around me, and he said, Son, that was a great move, but let's keep it on the streets. So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, are you on the street? Are you a street fighter? You know, there's a, there, there's a big difference between somebody who's in the ring and a street fighter. A good street fighter will pretty much clean the clock of a lot of good martial arts people. You know why? Because they have no fear. Anything goes. And they have one goal, and that's to annihilate their opponent. A street fighter already has the heart of a fighter. Someone who's, who's willing to do whatever it takes to win. Now, obviously, as, as Christians, we stay within the boundaries of what is right and what's wrong and, and stay away from what is wrong. But if, if we've been given all power and all authority over the wiles of the enemy, and greater is he that lives in us than, that, than he is in the world, and we're capable of bounding everything on earth, then, then what's the problem here? Why, why can we not clean the, the demon's clocks like we're street fighters? Why is this not happening? Why is this nation ready to fall at the hands of reptilians? Bloodthirsty reptilians. The ladies and gentlemen are going to be killing your daughters and your sons and your grandchildren. And I'm sorry, but it's the truth. And when I get someone who calls me and complains about Julie, Julie's fighting for your kids. And right now is no time to compromise, because if you compromise, you're a coward. And if you're going to cower, you're going to die. And when you die, your kids, your loved ones are going to fall at the hands of the evil one. And the church has taught you to be worthless. And, and because you're worthless, Jesus cries. Because what he did on the cross is to give us that power to fight. And we've stood down. We've, we've flung in the, in the face of Jesus. He bled for us. He died for us. And we're not doing what he told us to do. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Now, many of you are sick, and you've been beat up, and you're on medications, and you're you're whatever, and in and, and you're you're just you you know you were done ten years ago. Okay, but see, this is what the body of Christ is about. That when you have someone who has fallen, when you have somebody who's stumbling, where to be there? Where to stand with you until you can get strong enough to fight again. I'm telling you, when when the devil finally took me down, do you know why he took me down? I went to every church I could. I went to every counselor. I went to anybody that I could learn or talk to about what was happening in my life. And nobody could answer me. Nobody could help me. All they could do was condemn me send me home with my demons, tell me I didn't have any faith. 
when in reality I was in the fight of my life and I almost lost it. And I crawled, I, when I finally found a deliverance ministry and I crawled in there, and I, believe me, I did, and I started finding out that these were demons. I started finding out there were curses on me. I started finding out that the blood of Jesus, the Bible, the Word of God, those things that we have been given brought life, broke the curses, restored me, brought me back to who God intended me to be, gave me courage, gave me fight, gave me the ability to take back what the enemy had stolen. And, and when I realized that I had that power, when I had that ability, I wanted to share it with the rest of the world. I wanted to spread the good news. And when I went back to the churches, they gossiped, they slandered, they spoke evil. They even said I was doing witchcraft. They thought I was nuts, thought I was broken. I was removed off of intercessory prayer teams. I was re forbidden from praying for people. I couldn't believe it. I saw the power of God work for the first time. The, I saw the Bible come alive, and I couldn't wait to share that. And I was condemned for it. And I'm still to this day in the churches condemned for it. The Great Commission of Jesus Christ, Matthew 28, 26. Matthew 18, 18. Bind on earth what we bind in the heavens. We're to do those works because Jesus says if you do, it shows you love me. So I've made a choice. I can either go with the, with the mainstream and compromise and be a coward. Or I can choose to be who God intended me to be. Because it is no mistake that I am alive in these days. And I understand what Jesus did on the cross. And I either believe what he did or I don't. And if I believe he did, then I understand there are people who are being being tormented. There are children who are dying. There are children who are being molested and murdered. There are the elderly being allowed to die. There are those who are sick that are kept in bondage. This is evil. And and we're called to to remove it. We're called to, to cast it out. We're called to break those curses. So if I have to, to, to sound like I'm nuts or crazy, well then so what? Because you know what, ladies and gentlemen? It's God I'm going to have to stand in front of. It's the, the beam of seat of Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to show myself approved. I'm going to have to show that those things that were given to me as gifts, I did not throw away. It's him I fear. Not the devil, not the demons, and not the church. Now, you can have the church of Satan, you can have the church of whatever, and, and, I'm, and unfortunately, that if they're not doing what Jesus told them to do, then who are they? Who are they? Because my Bible says that I need to go make disciples of all men. I need to heal the sick. I need to set the captives free. I need to expose evil. I need to pro proclaim the gospel. I need to be bold in what I'm doing, and I need to run the good race because the tribulations and the trials that are coming, I need to show myself approved so no one steals my crown. So who am I going to believe? The doctrine of demons, the doctrine of men, the traditions of men, the rabbi, See, Jesus came to fulfill the law in that we become grafted in. We're, we're now with him, and, and he resides in us. So if you're not doing the works of the Lord, if you're not feeling the conviction that you're not doing enough, then, then you need to ask yourself, am I really saved? And what does that mean? 
what you you did the sinner's prayer, and but you continued in your behaviors. You you deny the power of the Holy Spirit. Look, ladies and gentlemen, there's something wrong here. And 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 that compromise and and the cowardness of the church has put you and me and my loved ones and your loved ones in the crosshairs of 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 demons of fallen angels, hybrids, reptilians, clones. If Jesus said he had to come back, if he didn't, there'd be no flesh left alive. That men's hearts will fail them for fear. Then, then we better believe it. And the book of Revelation is quite clear on how this all turns out. So you need to make a choice. And and my choice is who I'm going to serve. And if I'm going to serve him, then I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. And if if someone comes to me and and says, you know, that I need to just preach love and all this other stuff. Well, sure. My love comes from wanting to set you free. Because if I didn't love you, I wouldn't care. You ever been in a bad relationship where the other person, you know, you ever heard the saying, the one who loves the least is the one who's in most control? You ever heard that? So it's our love that we stand in righteousness and we draw the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we charge forward. We take no prisoner. We have to eliminate and eradicate evil because we cannot negotiate with it. Period. All right. God bless you guys. You know, this is this is no time. We we need to come to the aid of our faith, and that means that we, we do what we're told to do. Because if we don't, that is rebellious, that is lawless, that is uh, compromising. And I'm no coward because I am not ashamed of the gospel. And Tom Horn, if you tell people not to write scripture while that stinking rabbi is up there who was a liar, then, then you're ashamed of the gospel. I hope you hear that because I, I'm embarrassed for you. All right, everyone, God bless and good night. You're listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Visit our website at www.oneblueraven.weebly.com. Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to the all-new. Never replicated. You're listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network, Blue Raven Network.